We see steady losses as Rangers fight their way back to the top flight. Covid disruption worsened the profit picture, but the last two seasons have seen much improved bottom line performance. 2023, a loss of just 1 million. Due to Covid, that title winning season was oddly Rangers' worst financial performance. And over their seven year spell in the Premiership, losses have averaged out at 1 million. Uh, they can build a, build a better future and step by step, step, by step uh, become uh, you know, the force they were um, in, in Scotland, but also in Europe. Welcome to Numbers Behind the Net. Every week, we jump back on the football money trail, diving deep into a club's finances to uncover the state of play off the pitch. Today, we head to Glasgow to unravel the financial story of Rangers. Flashback to 2014 and Rangers secured promotion from League One as they continued their recovery from 2012's financial collapse and demotions. Two years later and Rangers were back in the Scottish top flight. Having restored their place in the upper echelons of Scottish football, Rangers would reclaim the Premiership title in 2021. They would suffer penalty heartbreak in the Europa League final the following year, but it's evident to see Rangers have been restored. On the sidelines, a cavalcade of managers presided over the Ibrox dugout over this decade. McCoist, McDowell, McCall, Warburton, Murty, Kushina, Nicol, Gerard, Van Bronckhorst, Beal. Now let's turn our attention off the pitch. What unfolded behind the scenes? Even following promotion back to the Prem, revenues didn't significantly increase till 2019. But following COVID, the last two years have performed the best, with 2023 generating 84 million of income, just 3 million off the previous year. So what's fueled this growth? Let's deep dive into revenue streams. Starting with gate receipts, these have climbed steadily as Rangers rebuilt. 2022 with that European journey generated 42 million, with 2023 just 2 million less the following year. And what about the underlying attendance figures? We can see that these have held strong in the Premier League years. In fact, averages increased back to over 49,000 in 2023. Ibrox size remains a key component to Rangers' fortunes, with gate receipts still making up half of all revenues. Next up, commercial revenues. These have also gone from strength to strength, the club delivering over 17 million in 2023. Broadcasting revenues, though, have not seen the same growth. Revenues are in fact down for 2022. Finally, revenue from UEFA and European competitions. This has become a significant revenue stream, with Rangers' group stage performance in the Champions League in 2023 generating more than their run to the Europa League final the year before. By league position, Rangers' title winning season is in fact middle of the pack, with the recent European adventures pushing up the overall revenue picture. On average, since their return, Rangers have made 56 million in the Premiership, almost three times that of the Championship. I'm as positive today as it's been in a long, long time. Now let's dive into profits. We see steady losses as Rangers fight their way back to the top flight. Covid disruption worsened the profit picture, but the last two seasons have seen much improved bottom line performance. 2023, a loss of just 1 million. Due to COVID, that title winning season was oddly Rangers worst financial performance. And over their seven year spell in the Premiership, losses have averaged out at 10 million. So what's going on here? Uh, they can build a, build a better future and step by step, step by step uh, become, uh, you know, the force they were um, in, in Scotland, but also in Europe. We'll be back to profit in just a sec, but if you're enjoying what we do here at Numbers Behind the Net, you'd be helping us out massively if you click that subscribe button and you'll stay up to date with all our latest videos. Cheers for all your support, and now back to the PL. Let's tackle this with our PL walkthrough. Let's set the timer, grey out the revenue, and dive into staff costs. Staff costs, as expected, have grown alongside revenues. But with the exception of 2021, these are well within revenue levels, even at 2023's peak of 64 million. As a percentage of revenue, 2023 makes up 76%. So how did this weight bill translate into points on the pitch? In the lower tiers, points came at under 200k a piece. But after promotion back to top flight, the variation grows. But in 2021, the title came at a price of half a million per point. 
Even with staff costs alone, the financial prize for Premiership football is clear. Next up, operating costs. These go on a roller coaster in the Premier League years, reaching 29 million in 2023. This is in part due to the number of games played as these ramped up with the return to the top flight and European campaigns. However, also in 2022, Rangers settled 8.25 million as part of litigation relating to a previous retail arrangement, reportedly Sports Direct. Even at the EBITDA level, 2022's Europa League year is the only one in the black. Third, stadium and facilities, expenses related to IBROX and other long-term assets. These have slowly increased, reaching 2.5 million in 2023. Finally, we end with transfer fees. As Rangers return to the Prem, these ramp up, reaching a peak of 9 million in 2021. The cumulative effect of player investments such as Ryan Kent, Kimar Roof, and Yanis Hadji. The story flips in 2022 with the club's transfer costs breaking even with the sale of Nathan Patterson, and 11 million of profit the following year, driven by the departures of Calvin Bassey and Joe Aribo. This change in transfer profile has fueled the uptick in bottom line profitability. This means Rangers' premiership margins have now improved to just an 18% loss. Significant improvements on the championship and League One. Yeah, you cannot uh, write a script better than this. So. Now let's see if cash matches the profit picture we've just seen. As usual, we're looking at the combination of cash from operations and transfer fees. Cash from operations, influenced by EBIT dial line items, sees heavier outflows initially as Rangers climb the divisions, but then the volatility continues. Over the 10 years though, Rangers have seen just 17 million depart Ibrox. Now let's shift our attention back to transfers. Do those recent big sales change the story? It doesn't come across in the cash picture. In fact, 2023 only saw 6 million net transfer cash come in. Rangers are still in fact owed 17 million from transfers made, but they themselves owe 15 million to other clubs for players bought. Over the decade, a further 45 million has left the club in transfer cash. Add those together, and it means 62 million has departed Rangers over the last 10 years. And then it was about having a vision and getting the right people in the right places, the right support from the board, and then fighting for it. So how much funding has been required? Cash has steadily been injected into Rangers, with a total funding over the last decade reaching 92.5 million. This has come in the forms of both loans and equity, as at the end of June 2023, Rangers looked in a comparatively healthy position with loans of just 16.5 million. So will Rangers' rebirth continue and see more titles come to their side of Glasgow? Only time would tell. Until next time.